TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu pledges to do everything in his power to mitigate Israel's internal rift amid efforts to pass reform to the country's judiciary. Amid rising tensions throughout the Middle East, amid ambitions by the Islamic Republic to attain nuclear weapon capabilities, among other malign activities, the United States asserts its commitment and preparedness to stand by Israel. The United States Central Command launches aerial strikes against multiple facilities affiliated with Iran's RGC in Syria following a deadly Iranian attack which claimed the life of one American and another five U.S. service members and a contractor. The Israeli government will do everything in its power to mitigate Israel's internal rift amid efforts to pass reform to the judiciary. Following Defense Minister Yav Gallant's call yesterday to seize legislation as part of efforts to engage in dialogue with the opposition, fearing detrimental consequences to the security of the State of Israel, Jerusalem's top defense official held an extensive meeting with Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu in which he updated him on holistic ramifications derived from the legislative process to realize the judicial reform vis-à-vis -vis the IDF and defense establishment as a whole. Subsequently, Minister Gallant announced that he would postpone a previously scheduled press briefing to allow Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu address the nation on the government's intention to mitigate Israel's internal rift. <laughs> מיד בהיוודת הוצאות הבחירות אמרתי אני מתכוון להיות ראש הממשלה של כל אזרחי ישראל התכוונתי לכך אז ואני מתכוון לכך גם היום יש לנו מדינה אחת ועלינו לעשות הכל כדי להגן עליה, להגן עליה מפני איומים מבחוץ ומפני קרע בלתי ניתן לאיחוי מבפנים איננו יכולים לאפשר לשום מחלוקת, חריפה ככל שתהיה, לסכן את העתיד המשותף של כולנו. לא רק שעלינו לדחות אלימות ובריונות, עלינו לדחות ועלינו גם לגנות הסתה והתלהמות. נתניהו went on to stress the vital need for unity in the country, highlighting that both opponents and proponents of the judicial reform love Israel and aim to preserve it as a democracy. The Israeli Premier went on to know that while supporters of the reform think there is no true democracy in Israel, Viewing the Supreme Court as an all-powerful institution that is elected by a select few of the country's so-called elites and which delves into every matter and in effect runs the country, opponents of the reform effectively lost faith in parliament and government, distressed by a scenario in which the legislative and executive branches of government would effectively act without any breaks and restraints which would inevitably infringe on individual rights. משטר דמוקרטי תקין חייב לטפל בשני הנושאים הללו. הוא חייב להבטיח את שלטון הרוב, והוא חייב תוך כך לשמור על זכויות הפרט. וכדי להבטיח זאת, וגם כדי למנוע את הקרע בעם, הרפורמה המשפטית, הרפורמה המשפטית לדמוקרטיה, חייבת לתת מענה לשני הצרכים הבסיסיים הללו. כדי למנוע קרע בעם, כל צד חייב להתייחס ברצינות לטענות ולחששות של הצד השני. ואני מבקש לעשות זאת עכשיו. אני מאמין שאפשר להעביר רפורמה שתיתן מענה לשני הצדדים. רפורמה שתשיב את האיזון הראוי בין הרשויות, ומנגד תשמור, אני אומר מעבר לזה, לא רק שתשבור, שתשריין 
את זכויות הפרט של כל אזרח ואזרחית במדינה. Prime Minister Netanyahu went on to highlight that dialogue remained crucial to find a solution to Israel's internal crisis and blame the opposition for its failure to engage with the coalition to realize a balanced reform. However, in response to Netanyahu's address, chairman of the National Unity Party, Benny Gantz, who is part of the Israeli opposition, voiced regret that the Prime Minister would not postpone legislation for the purpose of engaging in dialogue and sincerely mitigate the very real risks to Israel's security. צר לי שהוא לא מתעלה לגודל השעה ועוצר, גם כעת, כשגם מדבריו שלו ברור שזה הדבר שנכון למדינת ישראל. אבל מחסום השתיקה החל להישבר היום. חברי כנסת רבים בקואליציה, ובראשם שר הביטחון, רואים בדערת החקיקה אותה אנו חווים פגיעה חמורה בדמוקרטיה ובחברה הישראלית, כמו גם טעות היסטורית. הערב ברור מעל לכל ספק שההפיכה תפגע אנושות בדמוקרטיה ובחברה הישראלית. זו תהיה גם פגיעה בכינון ישיר בביטחון ישראל וחוסר אחריות לאומית ממדרגה ראשונה. גנץ went on to urge members of the coalition to vote against a bill which is scheduled to be voted on next week. as part of which the election of Supreme Court judges would effectively turn into political appointments. And while Netanyahu's coalition effectively has the necessary majority to pass the aforementioned bill into law, Israeli opposition leader Yair Lapid proclaimed recently that he would appeal against it at the Supreme Court, despite lacking any legal grounds to revoke the refer to legislation. ברגע שיעבור השינוי בוועדה למינוי שופטים, אנחנו נעתור נגדו לבג"ץ. הבסיס לעתירה יהיה פשוט. אם החוק הזה עובר, ישראל מפסיקה להיות מדינה דמוקרטית. אנחנו לא ניתן לזה לקרות. המחנה הליברלי פשוט לא מוכן לחיות במדינה לא דמוקרטית. מאות אלפי פטריוטים ישראלים ימשיכו לצאת לרחובות, אנחנו נמשיך להיאבק פה בכנסת, לא ניתן לזה לקרות. In other news, amid rising tensions throughout the Middle East, amid ambitions by the Islamic Republic of Iran to attain nuclear weapon capabilities, among other malign activities, the United States asserts its commitment and preparedness to stand by Israel. This ironclad commitment is essentially enshrined in U.S. policy vis-à-vis -vis the Middle East. Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs Celeste Wallander who testified to the U.S. Congress alongside commanders of CENTCOM and AFRICOM at a hearing of the House Armed Services Committee yesterday, further highlighted that Washington aims to further ratchet up cooperation with Israel to both exercise and demonstrate the level of interoperability between the two countries. You know, the United States is, has an ironclad commitment to the defense of Israel and uh, manifested most recently in the extraordinarily successful exercise Juniper Oak, which exercised and demonstrated the level of interoperability uh, and capability and the ability of the United States, CENTCOM in particular, to surge that capability and work closely with uh, Israel to, uh, to exercise and also demonstrate that capability. It is important to know that a large portion of the hearing focused on Iran's malign activities against the United States and its allies and partners in the region. Among others, CENTCOM Commander General Michael Kurilla was asked to the frequency of Iranian attacks against U.S. forces throughout the Middle East amid an evident uptick in Iranian strikes. Um, it, is, it is periodic. Um, we see periods where they'll do more. Um, There has been a number since uh, 1 January 2021. Uh, the number is about 78 times that we have been attacked. 78 times we've been attacked. Out of, and are these UAVs flying out of Iran and striking us, or are they being used by militias uh, controlled by Iran? So what Iran does to hide its hand is they use Iranian proxies. That's, uh, that's yeah. either UAVs or, or rockets to be able to attack our forces in either Iraq or Syria. Are, are these considered acts of war by Iran? They are being done by the Iranian proxies, is what I would tell you, Congressman. It is important to highlight that the last such attack occurred just yesterday, during which Iranian proxy militias, which operate on... ...strike, targeting a maintenance facility on a U.S. coalition base near Hasaka in northeast Syria, killing one U.S. contractor, 
and wounding five other U.S. military service members and a contractor. In response, early this morning, U.S. Central Command launched a retaliatory strike targeting RGC-controlled facilities housing Iranian proxy militias in Deir ez-Zor governorate, including in the areas of Al-Mayadin and Al-Bukamal in eastern Syria. Consequently, circulating reports reveal that at least eight Iranian-backed militia men were killed and several others were wounded, alongside extensive material damage to Iran's military infrastructure in the targeted region. According to U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, the airstrikes were conducted in response to the deadly attack against U.S. forces yesterday, as well as a series of recent attacks against coalition forces in Syria by groups affiliated with the IRGC. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. If you're blessed by our productions and would like help support TV7 Israel's ongoing operations, which are exclusively donation-based, please consider making a financial contribution. You can do so at www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, we would like to encourage you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and Mevorach, and God willing, We'll see you again on Monday at the same time.